So I got some good news to share with them. We, um, we, we've really engaged in this sustainability initiative at JBS. I represent, I'm going to put a little asterisk on that, I represent the fed beef side of JBS. So I'm speaking on behalf of the fed beef side. And man, we're, we're kicking butt on our sustainability goals. I'm not saying that to brag about us, because what I wanted to say it for is to compliment you guys, because you are a piece of that pie that has, that has spurred us as a company and as a industry to, to have a little more drive or direction or justification for sustainability projects. So again, I think we're doing excellent. The Fed Beef Division is, or the beef side is. Uh, and I want to thank you for playing your role in that. So JBS, as you probably likely know, is, is a large beef pork chicken company. And JBS USA it oversees uh, a number of different countries. It's got 100,000 team members. Uh, you know, the one thing I'll point out on this bottom row here is the 63 production facilities. So when we hear about the producers, and they're scattered across umpteen thousands of them across the states or Africa or Europe or whatever, I feel for you. But 63 production facilities is a big challenge, too. And in some ways, I think it may be more of a challenge to incorporate our sustainability goals and progress and really engagement into the, some of those 63 facilities than, than the numerous feed yards or production facilities. Uh, Figures. So 200,000 head a week, give or take, on the beef side. Here in the States, uh, my area is, is about 27,000 head of beef. So a few years ago, we did the material, material, materiality analysis and more or less came up with, again, the top tiered um, where, where the customer wants us to go, where we internally want to go, where the engineer NGOs want us to go. Um, and really it came up, what I'm going to talk primarily is, is obviously on the environmental side. So these are our 2020 goals. I like to think of them as all 20% because it's just an easier number for me to say that, hey, we're going to reduce water usage by 20%. We're going to reduce natural gas. We're going to reduce electricity. We're going to reduce greenhouse gas. It's going to be a challenge. On the natural gas and the electricity, it'll be a big challenge for us. On the water, we're, 20% is easy. Even though it says 10%, 20% will be easy. When we establish those goals, we took a we took a lighter approach to it. So, really, the first rule was me uh, going out to the individual plants, sitting down with the plant manager, sitting down with the environmental utility folks, the engineer folks at the plant, and looked at their natural gas, looked at their electricity, looked at their water, and said, "Where can we realistically get to?" And then we said, "To get to that point, we need." $2 million worth of capital or 200000 or whatever we needed. We made a list out on that. We also considered the repair and maintenance type of, obviously, anytime we put in a mechanical ins install, we've got some long-term repair and maintenance on it. There could be additional labor, et cetera. But really, we had good uh, plant buy-in from each and every plant to establish that first level. <clears throat> From there, obviously, we aggregated all the plants into a business unit level, and then our sustainability team put all those numbers together for, for the JBS USA. So what's it mean to the plants, and why, why does a plant care? Well, this is a big part of it right there. Each of the guys that really do the work at the plant are tasked with running that plant in the most economical, not econ well, economical, but efficient manner possible. And so when we set these goals, and this is for the Greeley, Colorado plant in particular, if we achieve the 2020 goals, which at that plant, we will, uh, you know, it's $800,000 a year worth of electricity savings to us, 415 
585. And that's, that's just the direct savings from the utility itself. The big part of what I've come to realize, especially, you know, I've been doing this for about 25 years, but I've, I see more and more as we get more engaged into the sustainability and more and more engaged into putting in these projects, I see one of the bigger impacts being, a, being an indirect in that, hey, if we're using 20% less water, that means a pump is going to pump 20% less of the time. That means the boilers are going to run 20% less of the time if we're reducing natural gas by that much. You know, that's a, that's a big impact on repair and maintenance, obviously on the utility side of things, but maybe even more so on, on like the wastewater where we have this big reduction and, and free up some of that volume. So you can see company-wide, if we hit the 20%, and our goal is somewhere in between 10 and 20 there on the water side, yeah, you know, that's, that's a lot of gallons. And, again, direct, direct savings, 22 million if we hit 20%, but, again, much more indirect savings than that. So just looking at the Fed beef division, um, you can see the targets as we went through each each of the plants and sat down with the folks at the plants. This is what we came up with. Cactus is in Texas, in the panhandle of Texas, and has probably uh, one of the bigger opportunities as far as protecting the long-term uh, viability of the aquifers there. So they're a little bit more aggressive, I think, to be to be safe. We definitely sandbagged on Greeley because, as you see later down, we've already hit that 20% and surpassed it greatly. But anyway, 25% for the fed beef division, which coupled with all the other divisions adds up to 12% uh, overall. So w one big thing that I try to focus on when we rolled this out was let's focus on one area in particular. Because again, these guys, the maintenance manager is coming into the plant not to shit, not to protect the environment. He's making sure that that chain, starting at that door, is running 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, back and forth. But we, so recognizing that, we wanted to make sure that we didn't overload them. And I think the water is a perfect one because at the end of the day, we know we got to buy the water. So. You know, nationwide, we probably spend two two dollars per thousand gallons just to buy the water. But then, uh, you know, the pie chart up there represents about 2.5 million gallons a day. Those four areas add up to about 1.25 million gallons of hot water. So on top of that, two dollars we have to put five dollars worth of natural gas in to heat it up there. Then there's 350,000 that we have to chill, so we have to put five dollars per thousand gallons on that just to chill it. And then you got the wastewater treatment costs on top of that and it adds up quick. In addition, this is this is a big one to me, it always surprises me. We can assume to pump if you got two thousand gallons, it's gonna take about seventy kilowatts to pump that. A big deal, you see. But or you say, what is a kilowatt? Whatever you say. Um we pump it more than six times as it goes throughout the facility. So thinking about 2,000 gallons a minute, which which our big plants are using, and we're looking at 225,000 just to pump that water six times. So again, if we reduce it 20%, obviously that 20, electricity is being reduced 20% too. We've already reduced it on the chilling side. We've reduced the natural gas on the heating side. We're reducing it more here. And most importantly to me, because this is what I grew up doing, was treating wastewater, we got a vessel like this that's been out there for 32 years or 50 years or whatever, and we've been trying to cram 3.5 million gallons through this thing, and all of a sudden we reduce our water usage by 20%. That makes that vessel a lot more effective. This picture here is a anaerobic lagoon up in Hiram, Utah. It's a beautiful location. I think our best located plant as far as visual. Uh, and again, we're, we're taking advantage that plants reduce their water uses by about 20%, and the biogas is being collected there much more efficiently and effectively than it had been. And we 
turn around and burn that biogas into boilers. This is kind of a catch-all because, again, I think there's so much more than just saying, ah, yeah, we reduced 20% and we saved $250,000 on electricity or whatever the case is. It really does free up these guys' times. If, they're, if they don't have to work on that pump because it's not operating as much or that ammonia compressor because we don't have the demand for it that we did, their focus can turn to more proactive activities, which we all know at the end of the day is going to get us much farther along much quicker than being reactive. So this kind of, again, Greeley, Colorado plant. Um, you can see the first 2015 going to the lightest blue is the approximate year-to-date number with a 2020 goal in the dark blue. So Greeley has already met that goal. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's about three months out of date, so that light blue year-to-date would be much, much less than what the goal is already. We still got plenty of plans as far as opportunities to improve it, really. So again, that's an easy, I don't want to say easy, but it's a, a very accomplishable goal that I feel we're definitely uh, succeed on. But I guess the point of this is when we reduce the water, and this is in, I'd say this is generally applicable to all packing houses. We reduce the water. The expectation is the natural gas, because we're not heating near as much, is going to follow suit. The electricity, even though we may be using a couple more pumps to reduce, to reuse certain waters, the electricity is going to follow. And surely the greenhouse gas in our packing house, in this packing house, is going to reduce too, because it's, it's all a scope one and scope two, which primarily comes from that use. So I'm a big fan of mechanical interventions, I, probably because it's very tough. I've got three kids and I can't control their own behaviors, so it'd be hard to control 3,000 employees. So I like to put in the mechanical side of it. And this is one example. Um, three years ago, we we're using 250,000 gallons a day of real, of 190 degree water on a carcass right before it went into the spray chill. So we're taking a uber hot carcass, putting it into the spray chill, and trying to take all that BTU out of it. We're using a lot of water, we're using a lot of steam, we're using a lot of ammonia compressors to chill, to, to chill down those carcasses after we put this hot water on it. So then we moved to PAA, parasitic acid, and that was mostly driven by the food safety folks and uh, I give a compliment to our food safety folks. We've worked extremely well with, with them all and all these projects. Um, and you, you can see the results. I mean, really, because of the fact that we've reduced the heat load on it, because of the fact um, we're able to recover this water that was being sprayed, now we're also able to recover the PAA. It was a, the payback on this project was bang, bang. And here, we've, we've got a, a number of projects inside the Edible area. Edible, the first one was, the PA cabinet was, but uh, more unique ones where we're taking, we're taking certain sterilizer discharges or gut table washes or head wash waters and being able to capture that, clean it up a little bit, disinfect it, and reuse it back in the process. Uh, there's, surely a de there's surely a final disinfection step on each one of those project, pro uh, products after we reuse water on it, but nothing out of the ordinary. And again, it's, it's a great success story that now we are able to, Greeley, Greeley was kind of like the, uh, the leader. We had chosen the Greeley plant as being the leader on this, so then we we're able to roll it out to all the rest of the plants. This is probably my favorite one because this is one that we we started off on, and we're just taking the the reuse of our pre-treated wastewater and reusing back on non-edible areas. So, like to clean down rendering or to wash down the pens or things like that outside of the plant. We started off with somewhat of a small project. Yeah, I'm going to say we start off with 
$75,000 capital project, and I kept going back to my boss and my boss and my boss, asking for more and more money, which was a great sign because, again, we, we realized that once we got this ball rolling, there was so much more opportunity that we could take advantage of. And my boss was actually hugging me, even though I was asking for more money, which, you know, doesn't happen too often. So a couple quick things, too. We do. We used to be ISO 14001 certified. It got all the respect in the world for that program. Uh, we we did determine maybe it wasn't right for us, so we we've kind of taken the right uh, certain things out of that program and implemented them in the pillar. And a pillar has got a sustainability section. It's got a KPI section. Um, it's got a utility reduction section, which all marry into why we're here today, along with. Uh, environmental compliance. This one, this is a picture of our Greeley plant, and 10 plus years ago, the city of Greeley was known for the odor. Uh, that was one of the big issues there. We surely played a role in it. We weren't the only party to play a role, but we probably play, played a substantial role. But we put in a 180 foot tall stack to, uh, re to get that odor, if there was gonna be any. Um, outside of the city. And, you know, we, we all want to be able to communicate our success and communicate our initiatives. But to me, I wish, I wish it was this evident because in the region, anyone's just got to look up. They can look up and see our success because once we did that, the order complaints went from here down to, I don't know, three in the past two years, three in the past three years. And again, it's just, a visual way to showcase, which we don't often have the opportunity for. Uh, one, one more thing too, you know, one, one of our big opportunities over the years was making sure that the pretreatment process, we recover grease from the wastewater. And we make, uh, with the pork and beef, we make about 90 million pounds a year of that grease, and that grease sells for 20 cents a pound, give or take, so that adds up pretty significantly. So, so one of our big initiatives, and really was kind of the last to adopt it, was, um, was improving that process. And you can see this is pounds of organic solids, so organic stuff, paunch and sludge and stuff like that, uh, land, land applied or composted or whatever, sent off site um, over the years. So, so big and a continuous downward trend, which again, you know, it's something we've been doing for a long time, but the only way we're going to continue to sustain that downward trend is with continued effort by all of you and by this industry and by this sustainability push to help us give us that little added uh, justification for these projects. Just to sum it up, um, here's where we stand, the fit beef side. Over the years, or over the years, yeah. You can see Hiram's on the greenhouse gas. What Hiram did was they put in an anaerobic lagoon cover and took care of about 60,000 uh, tons a year worth of greenhouse gas just by putting that cover on. We do have some, like Hiram here, as you can tell, is much above their 2020 goal. Uh, that's because we had on distribution center and a new fab floor. So, you know, we got we definitely have some work to do on everything, but uh well, on everything. So that's it and I appreciate your time. <laughs>